Year 4 edition. In Year 4, what the children have learnt in 1, 2 and 3 is added to. Lots of the skills that have been talked about in those videos are added to here. Here we have 86 out of 57. The children could be encouraged here to use a number line. They'd start with 86 and they'd be encouraged to add on the 50. They can do this by adding on a whole 50. If they find that skill too tricky, they could add on in jumps of 10. Hopefully, they would have the skills to be able to jump on one jump of 50. 86 add 50 is 136. They've added on the tens of their number. They've now got the seven left to add. When they're adding on their seven, they can bridge through the next multiple of 10. As discussed in the previous year groups, a multiple of 10 is a number that ends in zero. They want to add on seven. To get from 136 to 140, we need to add on four. We wanted to add on seven, we've only added four of that seven. So we've got three left to jump. 140 add three is 143, giving us our final answer. Children would be differentiated very much when it comes to this big jump of 50. And children that were not able to do that would be jumping perhaps up a 20, then a 30. Children who found it more difficult would jump in the tens whatever it takes to get them to the answer most accurately. Here's the same example, but with this, the children wouldn't necessarily use a number line. With here, with this, with this one, we could partition. We could partition our number, numbers into tens and units. So we'd start with our tens. In this number, I have eight tens. So eight tens are 80, and I'm going to add it to the tens in this number. Five tens are 50. 80 and 50 is 130. Here I've got six units and here I have seven units. So I've split up my tens and my units and I'm adding them together. Six at seven is 13. Here I've added my tens, here I've added my units and got my two answers that I now need to add back together to get my final answer. 130 add 13. The children would be encouraged in their head to know that 130 add 110 is 140 and the remaining three is 143. So my answer to the question is 143. As our last example, it's the same answer but we've used a different method. If children find number lines tricky, they might stick with the partitioning method and vice versa. They'd be taught both methods and encouraged to choose which one they prefer. Partitioning is also something that can be used for the larger numbers. Here we have numbers with hundreds, tens and units. And again, hundreds, tens and units. And exactly the same approach of partitioning can be used. So I have three hundreds and I want to add that to four hundreds. The children would be encouraged to recognize well if three add four is seven, three hundred and four hundred must be seven hundred. So we've added the hundreds from our number. We're now just as before going to add the tens from our number. We've got five tens which is fifty and two tens which is twenty. Fifty and twenty is seventy. Again, they'd be encouraged to recognise 5 add 2 is 7, but our numbers are 10 times bigger, so our answer needs to be 10 times bigger. We've added our hundreds, we've added our tens, we now add our units. 6 add 7 are our, is our remaining number sentence. 6 add 7 is 13. We've added our hundreds, we've added our tens, we've added our units, and because we've split the numbers up, we've now got to put them back together to find the final answer. 700, add 70, add 13. And the children would be encouraged 
to do 700 add 70 is easy, 770. Add the 10 from our 13 is 780. Add the 3, 783, giving us our final answer of 783. Also in year four, the children would be using the written method. This has been touched on in the summer term of year three, but is now looking at more tricky numbers. Just as in year three, we would be lining up the digits, 358 add 73. I've got my hundreds, my tens, and my units. The children getting them ready for the compact carry method would use the standard written method which is expanded and they'd first add their units 8 add 3 they'd then look at their tens 5 tens is 50 add 7 tens which is 70 50 add 70 and then they'd need the extra column which is an, an add on from year 3 three hundreds add no hundreds so 300 add 0. Next to each of our brackets we need to put our answer. 8 add 3 is 11. We very carefully put these under our units and our tens. 50 add 70 is 120. Again lining them up against next to our brackets and lining them under our hundreds and our tens. Finally we have 300 add nothing is 300. Just like the partitioning method, we've added our units, our tens and our hundreds, but this is in preparation for the compact carrying method. One add nothing, add nothing is one. One ten add two tens are three tens. One hundred add three hundred is four hundred. So our answer is four hundred and thirty-one. As the children get confident with this, and only when they are confident, they would then be moved on to the compact method. Exactly the same start is given. 358 add 73. We have our hundreds, our tens, and our units. But this time we also have a line underneath. We are not going to be using our brackets. We're going to use what we know about our brackets to form our answer more quickly. We have the reminder to children that we always start on the right hand side. We always start with the least significant digit first. Here we have 8 add 3. 8 add 3 is 11. I'm going to put my unit in here, but my 10 needs to go into the next column. However, if I put it in here, I haven't left myself any room to put my answer to this. So instead, I put my 1 underneath and I carry it. So my 110 and my 1 unit make my 11, which is my answer, but I've carried the 1. Now I've got 5 add 7, 5 add 7, 5 add 7 tens is 12 tens. But I've also got this 10 below from my previous answer. So 12 tens add 1 10 is 13 tens. My 3 can go here, but I have to again carry my 1 into the next column because this 1 is now worth 100. Here I have 300 add no hundreds. 300 add no hundreds gives us 3 hundreds but we need to ca count our extra one here. So our 300 add, four, add 1 gives us our 4. So our answer is 431. You can see that we've got the same answer using both methods. Children would only be encouraged to move on to this harder method when they are very confident with this. And the reason that we have these brackets is to prepare them so that they are clear on what these digits represent. We only move them forward when they are ready.